you're building any type of a car or truck that you want to have any go fast qualities you don't want to skip the torque converter i ran my c10 for a while on the stock converter after i upgraded the engine but it was a dog off the line after i installed a 28 to 3200 stall torque converter i could see a substantial difference in how the truck performed so i've got footage of it on the drag strip before and after the torque converter upgrade and i've also got some footage for you of how it behaves on the street so stay tuned hey welcome back to the channel now if this is your first time stopping by and you don't know me just let me introduce myself really quickly i am a wheelchair user but i'm still a dedicated car enthusiast and here on this channel i strive to make high quality entertaining and authentic car content so if you'd like to tag along with my endeavors feel free to hit that subscribe button and turn on bell notifications so you don't miss anything in my opinion upgrading the torque converter on any type of a you know a street strip application or even a, just a mildly modified older vehicle especially a heavy truck is an investment that is well worth it so when you're building a hot rod it's easy to get caught up in focusing all your energy on the engine and building overall power but if you really want to put that power to use you need proper drivetrain components that allow you to transfer that power to the rear wheels one of the most important drivetrain components is a torque converter with higher than stock stall speeds and before i go into details about all this i want to tell you that if you're a seasoned you know engine builder you probably already know everything i'm going to tell you i'm not going to go into too much detail i'm just going to try to keep it simple and give you the basics but if you are a more seasoned builder and if i miss something feel free to let me know in the comments so what is a torque converter well like i said i'm not going to try to explain how they work in detail because they're pretty complicated little devices and just to be honest I don't think I fully understand how they work anyway but for our purposes you only use them with an automatic transmission and basically they allow you to achieve the same goal as essentially popping the clutch in a manual transmission and what I mean by that is you know you can uh, in, a, in a manual you can hold the clutch rev the engine to your desired uh, rpm pop the clutch and the car launches forward so you keep hearing me say the word stall but what does that mean well all automatic transmissions have torque converters and they all stall a little bit the torque converter essentially allows the engine flywheel to rotate without actually turning the mechanisms inside the transmission which keeps the drive shaft from turning this allows the the engine to get up into its power band before transferring the power to the transmission so you can get aftermarket torque converters that are rated to stall you know anywhere even up to 5000 plus rpms this essentially allows you to rev the engine up to close to that rpm before it actually mates the engine with the transmission but why would you want to do this well when you upgrade your engine with performance parts it likely changes the power band for which the engine makes the most power where a stock engine might produce its maximum torque at 3000 rpms a high performance engine might not get to that to that peak up to a much higher rpm range camshafts are one upgrade that commonly changes the power band so where a stock engine with a stock cam might start making power you know very low rpms uh, a little more aggressive cam might not start making much power until higher rpm you know like 2500 plus therefore you need a stall converter that is rated at a higher stall to accommodate for that change in power 
Okay, the purpose of this video is to show you a real world demonstration of how my truck performed prior to the torque converter upgrade and how it performs now with a torque converter ready to stall between 2800 and 3200 RPMs. I'll also show you some clips of how the truck behaves in a normal driving situation. So when exactly do you need to upgrade your torque converter? Well, you may be able to do quite a bit of modifications to your engine before you have to upgrade, but it may not take much for you to need to upgrade. My C10 build is a good example. The engine in my truck is a 350 with a virtually stock bottom end, but it has high flow heads and a pretty good sized camshaft. And then of course an upgraded intake and top end. If you haven't already seen it, I made a full detailed video of everything in my truck. All the details of everything. If you want to see it, I'll link it in the description. But after I got the engine all upgraded, even with the fairly large cam, the truck still drove fine on the street with the stock torque converter. Part of that was because I have 410 ratio gears in the rear end, but it really did fine. But as I'm about to show you at the drag strip, it didn't do very well on the launch. In a minute you'll hear a clip, or in a minute you'll see a clip of where I launch, and you can hear where the engine fails to wrap up when it first launches. I'll show you a clip taken the next year on the same track after upgrading the torque converter and you can hear and see a significant difference. But I wouldn't have had to have done this. So it depends on what you want out of your vehicle. But for me, if you're going to go the route of spending the money and taking the effort to upgrade the engine to the extent I did, you really need to go ahead and upgrade the torque converter because you're not gonna be able to see the full results of that power until you do. But let's go ahead and get to the clips and then I'll come back and talk a little more. The first one is a run at the drag strip. You could have already seen this. This is footage, old footage. I have full videos of these trips to the strip. I'll link those in the description as well if you want to see them. But this is just an excerpt to demonstrate my point. So watch this where I take off and listen to the exhaust. You can hear how it really hesitates at first and then it gets that you know uh, part where it you can hear the rpms really wrap up quickly so that was the run before the torque converter upgrade now i'll show you the one a year later after the torque converter upgrade again notice how you can hear the rpms wrap up so much quicker in the second clip. Did you notice it? See, after the torque converter upgrade, it got into that power band, or up in that RPM range that it needed to be, much quicker, which allowed the engine to start producing the, the power that those upgrades, like the heads and cam, provided. Building a car, or truck that you're gonna be on the street with, primarily, you may be worried about streetability. And that's the second purpose of this video, is to show you how my truck behaves on the street when I'm driving normally. So no doubt it, it, it the torque converter definitely made the truck perform better. But I can't tell hardly any difference in how it behaves on the street with the high stall torque converter than how I did before. So check out this clip of me pulling out on the highway just normally. Um, you can watch the tack and listen to the engine. It behaves pretty much normal as it would, you know, with a stock converter. You can watch the tack and it may flash a little more. It may go up a little higher, you know, um, when I give it gas, but as far as behavior, it, 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 it's fine. Alright, so I'm just going to pull out 
here normally. Watch the back. It, it behaves well. So that was just a normal pull out on the highway. And here's a clip of just a, a cruise at a normal speed. Now, you will see the tech, the tachometer, uh, you know, it, it's pulling a lot of RPMs at normal speeds, but that's not the torque converter. That's just because the rear gears are so short or low. Check out this clip of me just cruising normally. So as you can see, it, it, it's pretty much normal. Um, now, I went out and tried to demonstrate, um, you know, the flash um, of the saw converter. If you don't know what I mean, uh, there's really two ways you can get um, the converter to do its stall. Uh, you can either use the brake or a line lock if you got it and rev the engine and it will stall that way or you can just dump the throttle all at once and it will do what is called a flash stall meaning it will just jump from idle to you know wherever it's going to stall now it won't always stall to its full potential that way the actual uh, best way to get the most stall out of the converter is to use it with a trans brake if you're familiar with that term uh, trans brakes essentially hold the car in reverse and drive at the same time and it allows you to rev the engine um, to your desired uh, speed and that's where the stall converter really shines but my truck doesn't have a trans brake and it's actually it's it's really hard to get a you know a clear demonstration of how it's going to stall just by using the foot brake or you know flashing it so i i, I, I just couldn't get a good uh, demonstration of that but here's a clip of me uh, you know taking off fairly hard maybe maybe half throttle and you can see that the you know it does flash but but it doesn't flash all the way to 28 to 3200 anyway you'll see anyway it's just really hard to get an accurate demonstration of flash stall because there's a lot of different factors that go into how the car will stall on flash but just take my word for it it made a significant difference in how this truck performs and it just made it overall a lot more fun to drive and i highly recommend spending the extra money and the effort to upgrade the torque converter if you make much modifications to your car or truck engine even if you don't go so far as so far that you you know essentially have to hey before we go check this out i got my dad's truck here i talked him into putting some flow masters on this thing listen to this Stay tuned for that because I'm going to do a full review on this uh, with all kinds of different clips and different RPMs and drive-bys, all that good stuff. And also, if you're mechanically inclined, I can't speak, if you're me mechanically inclined and experienced this type of thing, head over there and see that video when it's posted because something really weird happened.
that I've never heard of and I don't have an explanation for. And I want you guys to see if you know what I'm talking about and can maybe give me some info on it. Anyway, when it's posted, I'll link it right up here. Uh, your chances are you'll probably be watching this after it's posted, so go ahead and look up here and you can watch that. Also, keep an eye out for this. Uh, if you saw last week's video, we blacked out the tail lights on the C10. I got a roll pan in there I'm gonna install to complement this. So stay tuned for that too. And I've also got some interior uh, upgrades coming. So we got good stuff going, coming. I'll also link that video up here and in the description. But guys, I hope you found this helpful. Like I said, it wasn't meant to be, you know, a detailed explanation of how a torque converter works or how they're built. It's just uh, kind of a real world demonstration of my experience with it. And like I said, this is a 28 to 3200 uh, RPM stall converter from BM. I'll put a link in the description to this actual converter so you can look at all the specs. Like I mentioned before, I also have a video where I talk about all the details of my full setup on my truck. I'll link it up here in the corner. So check that out. And like I said, I got some good content coming up with uh, my dad's truck as well as the C10. So make sure you stay tuned for that. And uh, if you enjoy this and you want to support the channel, hit that like button and subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you next time.